Hey, how's it going everyone? This is I Am Air, and I'm back with another tutorial on Unity, and in this episode I want to focus on everything that would happen when your player takes damage. Now there's no universal way in which game designers handle and manage damage received by the player, but certain genres will usually have similar systems, and then a lot of game designers will go ahead and add their own twist to that system. In this tutorial I want to go over the most popular features you would normally see in a 2D action side-scroller, and throughout this video I'll discuss the following topics. How to manage player health and negate it when they receive damage. How to handle knockback force when the player is hit. How to handle invulnerability and make the player invincible for a brief amount of time after they take damage. And how to have the character die when the health points is equal or less than zero. This is all going to be done with two different scripts. One that's located on the player, and one that's located on whatever object is damaging the player. I'm also going to briefly touch base on how to set up animator components for this solution but I'll be using animations I've already made, as well as working with an animator component I've used in other videos on YouTube. So if you need help creating animations and managing the animator component, there's a link to another tutorial I made in the description that'll go over how to make animations and manage different animation states. All I'm going to show you in this video is the new logic I added to that animator component, and not touch base on any of the other animations. Alright, without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. The scene I currently have set up is very basic. It has a standard main camera, a generic ground platform, this red square that is simply an image of a square that's colored red, with a 2D trigger box collider on it as well, and finally a damage field script that I'll go over in this video. The 2D character I have set up is pretty standard. A couple quick things I want to note about my 2D character. This player is set up with a capsule collider 2D. This solution will allow you to use any collider type that you would want, but part of my death animation is going to have the player laying sideways on their back. And in order to animate that, the capsule collider's direction needs to be changed from vertical to horizontal. And in this solution, I have a couple lines that'll go ahead and manage handling the capsule collider's direction. So if you're not using a capsule collider 2D for your player, you can go ahead and delete any line in the solution that'll go ahead and manage handling the direction of the capsule collider 2D. Other than that, it has a standard rigid body 2D component in which I freeze the Z rotation. I have a character script that manages the different character states. And I've written this solution in a way that can be handled as a one-off solution. So if you don't have a script that'll manage the different character states, you don't need to worry about that. I also have a very standard horizontal and jump script. And have my character fully rigged with 2D IK components. And then of course an animator component to trigger the correct animations. If you need help making a character just like this, I put together a playlist that goes over all the videos in which we make this character. And recommend you check that out if you want to make a 2D character like this. The only script I'll be discussing on the player is the health script, so let's go ahead and open this up now. Now this script won't need any additional using statements, but I do want to point out that I have my health script inheriting from my character script. And if you don't have some sort of character script, either your own or the one that I've made in the previous videos, then you can still use this script as a standalone solution. Just make sure the health script inherits from mono behavior instead of character, and then uncomment these four variables I have at the top of the script. Uncomment the start method that I commented out. And then you can go ahead and delete this protected override void initialization method. However, if you do have a character script and would likely have this health script inheriting from something like that, then you don't need to worry about those changes I just discussed. Moving right along, I'll quickly discuss how this script is going to work. Before I describe what the variables are going to do, I want to note that all the variables I have marked as serialized field private variables can just as easily be serialized field protected variables or public variables if you want, but all the serialized field private variables are best set up in the inspector window. So regardless of whatever protection level you use for these variables, just make sure you can set these up in the inspector. The first variable I have is going to be the max health points. This value will be a limit to how much health points a player can currently have. The next variable will be a float value for vertical knockback force. This value will represent how high the player rises when they take damage, and usually this value is pretty small. Right beneath that we have another float value for horizontal knockback force, and this value will represent how far backwards the player needs to move when they take damage, and depending on whether or not the player is facing left or right when they're taking damage, backwards could mean moving right or left. Next we have another float variable named invulnerability time, and this value is going to manage how long the player needs to wait before they can take damage again and have knockback force applied to them again. Next we have another float variable named cancel movement time, and this value will help restrict player movement while knockback force is being applied. 
Next, we have a couple public variables that we don't want to set in the inspector, but we still need these variables to be public because another script is going to set their value. And the first one's going to be a bool variable named hit, and this hit variable is going to manage when the knockback force should be applied. Next, we have a game object variable named enemy, and really this game object variable is going to be whatever game object hit the player. And the reason we need this game object is because we need to know what direction the player is facing the damage to make sure that the knockback force is applied in the appropriate direction. This variable will make more sense once I go over that. So let's go ahead and continue. Next we have a set of private variables, and the first one's going to be an int variable named current health points. This value will be different than max health points, because this will be the current value of health points after damage is received, and max health points would of course be the maximum value that current health points can reach up to. And then last we have this capsule collider 2D variable named player collider, and this variable is going to be unique to those who use a Capsule Collider 2D for their solution, so that we can change the Capsule Collider 2D direction when the player takes damage, and change it from a vertical collider to a horizontal collider, so that the player can lie on their back when they die. If you're using any other collider other than a Capsule Collider 2D, you can go ahead and delete this variable. Now right under the variables I have this commented out start method. This start method is going to set up some variables that we set up in this script, as well as some other variables that I set up in my character script. And if you're trying to use this script as a standalone solution that doesn't inherit from anything but mono behavior, go ahead and delete the lines that comment out the start method, and then also delete the protected override void initialization method below. However, if your health script is going to inherit from some sort of character script, then all we're doing in the initialization method is setting the current health points to max health points, as well as setting the reference for the Capsule Collider 2D for the Player Collider. Now real quick, I do want to touch base on where we set current health points to max health points. Depending on what type of game you're making, Current health points might not always equal maximum health points when a scene loads, so make sure that the current health points make sense for your game. And if I was going to set the current health points at the start like I would for the initialization method here, then I would first set that value up as a player prefs so when we load a new scene, and then get that player prefs value in the initialization method here as the current health points. But going over how player prefs work is outside of the scope of this tutorial, so I just set current health points as the max health points at the start to make an easier tutorial. Moving right along, next I have a fixed update method that'll go ahead and run a method called handle knockback so long as hit is true, but of course if hit is false, then the fixed update method runs no logic. Right under the fixed update method I have the damage method, and the damage method is going to take an int parameter called amount. This amount value will be fed by whatever script calls this method, and I have this damage method set as a public void method so that other scripts can call it when they need to apply damage to the player. For this solution, the only script that's going to call the damage method is the damage field script that I'll go over later in this video, but for now let me describe how the damage method is going to work. The first thing it's going to do is check to see if hit is false, and if it is, then we can go ahead and apply damage to the player. Right after it makes sure if hit is false, it'll go ahead and set hit to true immediately, and this will prevent the damage method from running more than once when the player gets hit. Next we go ahead and negate current health by the damage amount, and again this amount value is going to be fed to it by the script that actually calls the damage method. For this tutorial it's going to be the damage field script. Next we check to see if current health points is less than or equal to zero, and if current health points is less than or equal to zero, then that of course means that the player is dead, which means we need to set up everything for the character dead state. Now for this particular solution, because I'm using a Capsule Collider 2D, I need to change the Capsule Collider 2D's direction to horizontal, so that the player can fall on their back when they die. And if you're using any other collider type, you can go ahead and delete this line. Next we need to set whatever script is going to manage the is dead bool to true. And then all we need to do is set the animator dead bool to true. Moving right along, we have a private void handle knockback method. And this method is going to manage everything from knockback to putting the character in the damaged state. First we set whatever script is managing the taking damage bool to true. Then we set the damage bool and the animator component to true. Next we want to go ahead and apply the vertical knockback force. But before we apply any kind of horizontal knockback force, we need to see the player's position in relation to wherever they're receiving damage, so that we can apply the knockback force in the appropriate direction. So this if statement is going to check to see if the player's x position is less than the enemy's x position, then that would mean the player is to the left of the damage, and needs to fly backwards into a leftward direction. But if the player is to the right of the damage, then they need to fly backwards in a rightward direction. After we apply all the knockback force, we invoke two different methods. The first one's called cancel hit, and we run it after invulnerability time. And all the cancel hit method is going to do is set the hit bool back to false. This other invoke method enable movement is going to run after the cancel movement time. And what this method is first going to do is check to see if the character is still alive. And if the character is still alive after they've taken damage, then we want to set the damage bool and the animator component back to false, as well as set whatever script is managing the taking damage bool back to false. Now real quick before I go over the damage field script, 
I want to show how this taking damage pool is being used by another script to restrict all additional movement while the player is taking damage. In my horizontal movement script, where I check for input detection for horizontal movement, I have a conditional check that ensures that the taking damage pool is set to false before it can run any logic. And the reason we do this is so that we can restrict all movement while the player is taking damage. But if you want the player to still be able to freely move while they're taking damage, then you wouldn't need to add anything like this to your horizontal movement script. Moving right along, I'll discuss the damage field script now. This script is going to use all the standard using statements, and this script can go ahead and also inherit from mono behavior. This script is only going to have a couple of variables. One is going to be an int value for damage amount, and I have this set up as a serialized field private int. This could be a serialized field protected int or a public int. Go ahead and protect this variable however you want. We just need to be able to set this in the inspector window. And then next we have a quick reference to whatever collider type is on the damage field. The damage field can have any collider type that you want, it doesn't matter. But it would definitely be smarter to reference the collider type on an onEnable method rather than a start method. Because whatever is causing damage might not be enabled at start. And we want to make sure we have these established references no matter how the game object is referenced into the scene. So within the onEnable method, the first thing we do is set up the reference to the collider type. And then next we go ahead and make sure that that collider is a trigger collider. And this is actually more of a fail safe just in case you accidentally forget to set the trigger collider within the inspector window. Because this solution requires whatever object is causing damage to have a trigger collider on it so it can register the damage. Right under the on enable method we have an on trigger enter 2D method. The first thing we want to do is set up two quick references. First we want to set up a reference of whatever game object is the player, and then we want to set up a quick reference to the health script on the player. After we set up those two references, we want to check to make sure that the collision game object is in fact the player, and if it is the player, then we set up the enemy game object variable on the health script to this game object, and then we also run the damage method found on the health script. The damage method does require an int value to run, so we feed the damage method the damage amount value found in this script, and we'll set up the damage amount value in the inspector window here shortly. Now real quick before I go back into Unity and playtest all this, I want to show you my character script and the two new hide and inspector public bools that I've added to the character script. As you can see I just added two new bools to the script, I didn't add any additional new logic. So if you're using this script or any other character like script, this is all the new logic that you'll need to add to this script. And if you're not using a character-like script, then you can use those variables that I commented out at the top of the health script. With all the scripts explained, let's go back into Unity and test it all out. Let's first set up the health script on the player. I have my max health point set to 100. I have the vertical knockback force set to 150. I have the horizontal knockback force set to 750. I have invulnerability time set to 0.25. And then I have cancel movement time set to 0.65. Then if we take a look at the damage field component on the damage area game object, I have damage amount set to 25. Now I'm very quickly going to show you how I set up the animator component to play the correct animations. First I added two new bool parameters to the animator component. The first one is called dead, and the second one's called damage. And these are the same exact string reference names that I have set up in the health script. So make sure they're spelled out the exact same way that they're spelled out in the scripts. And then I have my dead and damage animations. For both of these animations, I transition from any state to the animations, and then under the settings tab for both of these animations, I uncheck the box for can transition to self, and for the dead animation, I have the condition set as dead is true and damage is true. For the damage transition, I have damage is true and dead is false. For the vertical movement animation, I added another conditional, and made sure that damage is set to false. And I also added another condition to the idle animation, and just made sure that dead is set to false as well. One last quick thing I want to note before I play test. By default, Unity always has animations play in loop, and so for both of those animations in the project window, I made sure this loop time box is unchecked. Let's go ahead and play test now. And as you can see, once the player runs into the damage field, the player is immediately knocked backwards and the damage animation plays. I'm unable to control the player movement for a very brief amount of time, but after that time passes I can run right back into the damage field and the process repeats, until the current health value is reduced down to zero, and then after that the player simply dies. That'll go ahead and wrap up this video. If I was able to teach you something or you found the information in the video useful, please consider liking the video, and if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing as well. One last thing I want to mention before I go, if you were using the information in this video to make a Metroidvania style game, consider checking out my Metroidvania Toolkit course on Udemy. 
It goes over everything you need to know to make a Metroidvania-style game. And I always have a coupon on my website that gives you a discount to the course if it's not already discounted. There's a link to my website in the description. Regardless, I definitely appreciate you watching the video. If you have any suggestions for future videos, go ahead and leave them in the comments. But I hope to see you in another video, and hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.